All right, here are solutions for a perfect problem five for math to 11. Uh, in this problem, we're getting into the difference between modeling division with the partitive method versus the uh, measurement method of division. So in one here, you have to write a problem that most naturally, that is most naturally solved using the partitive method of division. So here's kind of my shorthand for it. In the partitive method, the student is told how many groups you have and you're asked to find the group size. So how many elements, how many objects are in each group. So that's the one that I want to use, the partitive method. So where could that come up? Um, let's see. F four friends are splitting an order of, I don't know, 12 hot wings. Sure. Why not? Uh, how many wings? does each friend get? So clearly it's a division problem. The answer is three, right? You take 12 and divide it by four and get three. That's not that hard. Um, but what is a little bit more challenging is to note that you are actually using the partitive method and not the measurement method. So for part two, when we sketch our diagram, really what's going on is you have kind of these 12 wings up here. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have these twelve wings, which I'm going to use X's to represent because I'm lazy like that. Um, and I know that uh, I have four friends splitting these up, so I already know how many groups I'm going to have. There's one group, there's my second group, there's my third group, and there's my fourth group. Before I solve the problem, I don't know what the size of each of these groups are, but I do know that there will be exactly four groups down here. Note that that fits in the partitive here. I'm told the number of groups, I'm asked to find the group size. So what I do is I take these 12 and I kind of allocate them. All right, you get one, you get one, you get one, you get one. I got more left, so how about I'll give everyone a second one. Oh, there's more wings. Okay, eat another one, everybody. Oh, there's exactly four left. Okay, I guess we can each have one more. And what we just did is we split up. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> Sorry, I can't count. There we go. That's all of our wings. Uh, and so what I did is I took these 12 and I knew that I was going to partition them into four different groups. And so my answer to the question would be three, but it would be this model right here, this picture. Okay, maybe I can make that make more sense by giving another example, another word problem. Um, but this time a word problem that would make more sense in the measurement method. So now uh, what you are told, is, what the student is told, is what the size of each group is beforehand. So you're not figuring out what the size of the group is. You already know what the size of the group is. So you could do something like um, you want to share, not share because that makes it sound like you're going to have some too. You want to give hot wings away. Um, to, how about a way uh, in, I'm doing this horribly. You have, let's give the number at the start here. You have 12 hot wings to give away. Um, each person will eat exactly three wings. How many folks can you feed? Well, it'd be the exact same problem, right? You'd still have the 12 wings up here and you'd be giving them away three at a time. So you'd grab three of these guys and put them down here, three of them put them here, three of them put them here, three of them put them here. Now you're out of wings. But note that you already knew there'd be three in each group. You just didn't know how many groups there would be. It turns out there's four. That's the answer to this question here. Um, and maybe I should write these up. In this problem, four friends are splitting an order of hot wings. Uh, so I'm doing 12 divided by four and getting three is my answer. Uh, for number three here, what I'm doing is I'm taking 12 and I'm dividing it by three. 
because each person will get exactly three and I'm getting four as my answer down here. Uh, so that kind of talks about an example anyways of the difference between the measurement and the partitive method. Um, while we're here, I said to solve the two problems using the missing factor approach. Well, the way you solve 12 divided by four equals question mark, X I guess if you've seen algebra, is you, you want to use the missing factor, you say, well, there's some number out there, I'll denote it with the question mark, that when I multiply it by four, I get 12. What number is that? Oh, it's three, because four times three is what gives me 12. So for the student that really can't understand division, maybe they can still answer this question using multiplication, uh, and specifically what's called the missing factor approach. Whereas on the blue problem, I would say, well, I was trying to figure out what 12 divided by three was equal to, and the way I figured that out is I say three times something gives me the 12. What is that something? Oh, that something must be equal to four. So here's my solution for number three. And here is my solution for number one. And I think what I've done is I've answered all the questions I was asked to. So I guess that ends the solutions here.